It's the final dress rehearsal, plus me and Chris give our VGK predictions and season-long predictions. That's up next on Locked On Vegas Golden Knights. Your Locked On Golden Knights, your daily podcast on the Vegas Golden Knights, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up? Happy Saturday. It's the final preseason game. On Wednesday, the lights go on and everything starts to matter. It's Chris and little Chris for the Saturday Chris and Chris Locked On Golden Knights show. Uh, you can catch this only on YouTube, so if you're trying to find this on audio, you're not going to. YouTube only most Saturdays during the summer. Chris, say most Saturdays. What do we think? Uh, Perfect. Good answer. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're donning our Argentina gear today because uh, my daughter, Chris's sister, Allie, plays for Argentina in the, in the Henderson Soccer League. She had a goal today. They had a, a nice victory, so we're supporting Allie and all of her hard work. Maybe she'll make a cameo today. All right, Chris, we're going to be in the building tonight for the final preseason game before the game starts to matter. Playing the playing the San Jose Sharks tonight. I don't believe Malik Mack and Celebrini is going to be playing. I think he's hurt. What do you want to see from tonight's Golden Knights game? Assume most of the vets are playing, if not the same or close to the same lineup. We're going to see on Wednesday night. Um, I am definitely interested to see how which goalie plays and to see. Assume it's going to be Aiden Hill. Samsonov played on Thursday. It's almost certainly going to be Aiden Hill tonight. I'm just see how he how he will play and how that will and how it will affect the rest of the season. Okay. Also, I'm I'm just curious on um, on how on how the line does because this is basically the same line as the regular season, right? It should be pretty close. It should be very very. Very close to what we're going to see on Wednesday nights. I'm excited for also, also that, and just curious on how the game will go from from the results in the last Saturday game. Yeah, I mean, last Saturday games was fine, right? I mean, they uh, they got the w- the win over the Colorado. No, not Colorado. Who did they play last Saturday? Who was that? Last Saturday, the game we were last- at. Yeah, Utah. Utah, that's right. Geez, it was so long ago, buddy. It it feels like forever ago. So it looks like we'll see. So they're moving some stuff around tonight. They might try Eichel with Stone. You might see Nick Wass centering a line with Barbershev and Brisson. Talk about that for a second. Um, William Carlson, still not skating with the Golden Knights. He's skating on his own. He is seriously in doubt in playing in the opener and possibly beyond. So... Does that concern you, Chris, if William Carlson were to miss, let's say, the first couple weeks of the season? Mm, not really sure. I don't, I don't really remember him standing out last season. So 30 goals, 30 assists, dude. 30 goals, 30 assists. Pretty good year. I don't think it will be such a big deal, but I think the team will definitely do a lot better with, with him. Fair enough. That's good. That's fine. Tony, will, Tony can accept that answer without uh, without getting mad either one of us, so good job there. Good job there. Um, third line, I'm very curious to see. You're going to have possibly Tomas Hurdle with Dora Fiev and Alex Holtz. Alex Holtz has been kind of quiet this preseason. Uh, the Tanners, Tanner Lazinski, Tanner Pearson. Tanner Pearson did get his official contract, Chris, so this might be, and someone out there in uh, the Twitterverse can correct me if I'm wrong, this might be the first ever player that earned a contract through a PTO for the Vegas Golden Knights. So congrats on Tanner Pearson. And uh, you got to give a lot of credit to Kelly McCrimmon for finding ways to add some talent to this roster despite all the players that were lost. You got Lazinski doing well in the preseason. Tanner Pearson, two players I don't even think were going to be anything special, to be honest. Um, they're both doing really, really well. So, um, Lots to be excited about. Um, for me, what I want to see tonight, I want to see a good, clean, crisp game. I'd like to see a little bit of desire, meaning when I, I want the Golden Knights to want to win this game. I want them to want to play the game well. Coach Cassidy had a really good comments 
in today's uh, Saturday's press conference to be respectful to the game. That simply means playing the game the right way, doing the little things right. There you go. Just yeah, you're on you're on the ball. Good job, dude. So that's what I want to see tonight. I'd like to see him win. I'd like to see Aiden Hill have a nice game. Uh, power play was looking pretty decent on Thursday. We'd like to see a little better performance. And if the Gold Knights are losing down the stretch, I'd like to see him have more than zero shots in the last 13 minutes of the game or whatever the number was. So what do you want to see tonight, Chris, from the game? What do you want to see happen? I just want to see a good impression from what is probably going to be the the line for the regular season. If if we can do that, I think the team will be really. I think I think I'll feel a little bit better about the regular season. Ah, oh, there's Ali. We were just talking about your soccer game this morning, Ali. Congratulations on your victory today. Thanks. Did you get a goal today? Mm-hmm. Nice. And she didn't do her penguin slide. And no How penguin slide for Ali. Oh, there she goes. Is now a bad time to remind you there's no ice in soccer, bro? A penguin <laughs> slide might hurt. All right, so that's the, that's tonight's game. Now a lot to talk about. Me and Chris want to see a good, clean, crisp hockey game where hopefully the Golden Knights veterans take care of business and – I mean, maybe whoop on the, the San Jose Sharks a little bit, maybe like a nice 4-5 or 6-1 or to one victory or something like that. That would be a nice just motivational piece, if you will, heading into the regular season, which starts on Wednesday. All right, Chris, let's talk about some VGK predictions. I will pitch some things. You'll tell me what you think. We'll kind of go quickly through a couple of these. First of all, Chris, last year the Golden Knights had 98 points, and that was good enough for – the second wild card spot, which is the equivalent to the eighth seed in the Western Conference. Over or under 98 points for the Vegas Golden Knights regular season? Well, so far preseason is going pretty good. I think I think I think they can get the over just by a little bit this season. How many points? Hmm. 10506. 100, 500, 6, that'd be really good. I am going to say slightly under. I think this is a 94 to 97 point season team, which will be good for possibly one of those wild card spots. Obviously, that can change. There's a lot of question marks, a lot of question marks. And, you know, it's nice to see some new players coming in, but a lot of changes, a lot of changes. Um, all right, let's talk about some random players, and I'll give you some stats. You can tell me. If someone will go over or under. So last year's leading scorer for points was Jonathan March. So it was 69 points. Will someone this season on the Vegas Golden Knights score greater than 69 points? I doubt it. Okay. So Jack Eichel had 63 games played and scored 68 points. So better than a point per game uh, pace. Can Jack Eichel play greater than let's call it 65 games this season he played 63 last year um well it, i think it all depends on how it's on how his health on how, his how health do you think his health is going to be buddy how do you think his health is going to be is he going to have a healthier season or not as healthy of a season mm -hmm. i think I think he plays a, a good 68 games a season. So 68 games using last year's numbers. That's about 73 to 75 points adjusted. So we're, we're predicting Jack Eichel to be the leading scorer. Is that fair? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Mark Stone, 56 games played, 53 points, misses the last 26 games with a spleen. Can Mark and Stone... Turns in game one of the playoffs. Can Mark Stone play greater than 56 games this season? Again, it all depends on his... All de How all healthy is he going to be, buddy? What do you think? Give me a prediction. Give me a prediction. Oh, he's not going to be healthy. Not going to be healthy. This season is this season's going to be like every other. A total of 60 games played. 60 games played. All right. I've been very high on Mark Stone. I'm calling 75 games. I'm the only one... That's putting that out there. I'm saying a healthy year for Mark Stone. 75 games north of 70 points. Mark Stone is going to do his best to lead this team as far as that he can possibly take them. Um, 
Okay, Shea Theodore, will he be a golden knight on the trade deadline, yes or no? This is a contract year. He's slated to make a lot more money than he made this year. Is Shea Theodore a Vegas golden knight as of the trade deadline in early March? I think so. I, I don't I don't see a world where he gets traded. Okay, that's fair. That may or may not happen. Aiden Hill or Elias Samsonov, who starts who has more appearances this year in that? Last year Aiden Hill had thirty five appearances his career high. The year before was twenty seven. Samsonov has had forty or greater appearances in each of the last three seasons. Well, by looking at Samsonov, especially in the last game against the LA Kings, he had some really good saves, yet let in some really weak goals. Yet Aiden Hiltz has not made some really good saves, but has also not let in many goals. How that result, I have no idea. I think I think Aiden Hill will, will just barely get a few more starts with the total of 43 starts this season. 43. I think we'll take 43. I I think he needs 45 appearances or starts, however you want to hash that up, to basically earn his contract. He makes 4.9 million AAV. He's being paid a starter's wage. So hopefully, uh, as he mentioned, he I think he might answer the question to you about his health. Um, I think uh, he's worked hard on his health in the off season to hopefully have a very strong year, and uh, it'd be really good for the Golden Knights if he gets even to forty three appearances. I would not mind that one bit. Keegan Colasar, I have no idea how many he had last year. Um, how many fights for Keegan Colasar this year? Over under six fights for Keegan Colasar. Hmm. I think he's placed in the ring 10 times. <laughs> Colasar, I think, is going to have a busy season. Um, watch tonight's game, Chris, when Mark Stone is out there skating, especially behind the play. I've noticed twice this season Mark Stone has been dropped or targeted, maybe like an accidental on purpose type thing, but Mark Stone has been targeted a lot. He's, uh, I mean, he's public enemy number one for the reason you were joking earlier. And for what's happened with the Vegas Golden Knights and Mark Stone for the last few seasons. So Mark Stone is going to have a tough year. He's going to be the subject of a lot of um, a lot of confrontation after the whistle and during play. So that's why I asked about Keegan Colasar, a number of fights he might have. Colasar is going to have to be Mark Stone's bodyguard out there. Colasar has a very important responsibility, not just to protect all the Golden Knights, but to really keep an eye on Mark Stone because Stone's going to be uh he's going to be punished this season and he better be ready for it and I think he'll handle most of it but it, it wears on you it really wears on you um I guess last question about the Golden Knights predictions here is there a player you're excited to watch this season like who do you is there someone you think is going to do really really well and who do you think might not do as well this year I'm definitely excited to see how Samsonov plays. I think. I see Samsonov. Okay, goalie. I think I think he he's gonna be really imp impressive this year, and and the player I think won't do so well. The lowest score this year is gonna be the top fighter Keegan Colasar. A uh, player I don't think that does so well this season is. Hmm, Overall, what I'm seeing, I don't see a lot coming from uh, I forgot his name. I thought you were going to say Carlson. There's a bunch. There's a bunch of new new players. I can't keep track of them all. No, that's fair, and we'll learn through the season. Um, for me, I'm excited for Pavel Dorfiev. I'm really cannot wait to see him grow. I called him a hybrid of Mark Stone and Jack Eichel. Mark Stone is really good at back checking and. You know, just just tracking the puck on the defensive side, and Jack Eichel is really good. I mean, we talk about this all the time. He goes behind the net, looks for a pass, goes behind the net again, looks for a pass, and he's constantly like his feet never leave the ice, but he increases his speed. It's one of the coolest things to watch. So I'm really curious to see how Dorfiev's game grows throughout the season. He's in line for a special year, I think. Um, for me, Brett, or excuse me, not Brett Howden, um, well, Brett Howden too, but Braden McNabb. Uh, McNabb, 82 games, quiet, 
very healthy season. He's just getting older, getting to that point where I don't think he can continue to play large amounts of games. So I think Braden McNabb goes backwards a little bit. All right, let's jump right to the final segment of today's show. We are going to do league predictions. We are going to give who we feel wins each division and then our Stanley Cup matchup and winner. So, Chris, Central Division, who wins really quickly? Utah. Utah. I like it. Listen, it's a bold call. I like it. I'm going to take the Dallas Stars, which is also my possibly a, a prediction coming up later. Pacific Division, who wins? LA Kings. LA Kings. Wow. Injuries. Listen, it, it's bold. Uh, I'm going Edmonton. Um, a lot of stuff has leaked from um, that Amazon. I think it's an Amazon documentary about the, the Stanley Cup run the Oilers had. They're pissed off right now. They're pissed off. That's uh, Edmonton is who I'm going to say there. All right. Atlantic Division, Chris. What do you see? Atlantic's tough. Atlantic's tough. Hmm. I think Tampa has. I think Tampa will have a good season this year. Yeah, Tampa. I mean, there's a possibility they finished uh, only 12 points behind uh, the Panthers, who won the division, and but that was also fourth place. So razor razor thin margins in the Atlantic Division. I'm going to go Toronto. I don't like that prediction. I still don't think they get out of the first round, but I'm going to go Toronto just because I think they've had the least amount of turnover of all of the teams. Bruins got a weird situation with their goalie and Jeremy Swayman. No contract yet. No idea how that's going to play out. Panthers have had some roster turnover. Lightning have also lost some players. So we're going to go with Toronto and the Metro division. Last one, buddy. What do you say for the division? Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Man, you got a... Man, you got some... Uh, you're out there a little bit there, Chris, today. I like it. I like it. I like it. You've been, called, you've been talking about Pittsburgh for a while. Okay, so... Give me your stand. Oh, for me, for the Metro, I'm going to go Carolina, by the way. Or no, no. Yeah, I'm going to go Carolina for the Metro, but that's not who I say is going to win the Eastern Conference. Relax, buddy. Relax. Okay. Chris, give me your Stanley Cup matchup. Utah and Pittsburgh. Utah and Pittsburgh. I love it. Utah going to win it, buddy? Utah is going to win the Stanley Say it. Say it. Say it right now. Back up. Definitely close from the the close. Hey, stop. Chris, back up. Too close to the camera. Good. Okay, now go. Definitely from what I saw last year, especially at the end of the season from Arizona, especially on their final game in well, Arena, playing, um, beating Edmonton 5-2. Uh, I, I, I think that they're able to – I think that they'll be able to keep um, – I think – I think they'll be able to keep how good they've been lately, and I think they'll be able to beat Pittsburgh in six. We talked about Utah on the podcast on Lot Me and Tony's uh, Locked On. Um, Utah has a lot of cap space, and they're in a unique spot, Chris. Where if they are like a like a borderline playoff team, they can make a lot of moves and actually get a really a group of really good players at the trade deadline. So as crazy as it sounds. It's not that crazy what you're saying. Pittsburgh, I don't know about that. But Utah, you could be onto something there, buddy. You never know. You never know. I mean, if the Gold Knights can can get to the cup final in season one, this version of Utah can make some noise as well. So for me, Chris, I am going to say the New York Rangers end up winning the Eastern Conference and make it to the cup final against I said Carolina for the Metro. Yeah, that doesn't mean I think they're gonna make it to the cup final. So, Rangers, you and Tony's Rangers are going to win the East. Going to go up against Pete DeBoer's Dallas Stars. Pete DeBoer is going to get his first Stanley Cup finally in the 24-25 season. Um, DeBoer, listen, if Paul Maurice can win a Stanley Cup, Pete DeBoer can win a Stanley Cup. They're the same coach, similar rosters, similar circumstances. So if Paul can do it, Pete can do it. Rob, Rob and Peter to pay Paul, right? Is that how that goes? All right, you're too young for that mm -hmm. anyway. All right, last thing, Chris. Give me a score prediction for tonight's final preseason Golden Knights game. 
Wait, who is winning the cup this year? New York? Or Dallas. Yes? Dallas is beating the Rangers, buddy. That's, that's what I said. Dallas is beating the Rangers, buddy. Sorry. Seven games, triple overtime. So it's fun. All right, dude. Um, last question. Who's winning the Golden Knights game tonight? What's the score? I think we're going to have our first overtime of the preseason with... Tony would love there's like nine of an, uh, Tony would love a nine round shootout. He loves shootouts. Let's go six five six five for San Jose. Six five. That's not what I want to see for for Aiden Hill in, in overtime. In overtime, um, I think the Golden Knights roll pretty deep in this game. I can see, I can see a route. I'm gonna go. I'm going. I'm going seven nothing Vegas tonight. I'm going seven nothing Vegas. See Lloyd's barbecue. This is not locked on San Jose Sharks. I'm all about VGK tonight. So chill off, chill out, my friend. Chill out. All right, Chris. Anything else tonight? Golden Knights related. Uh... Fair enough. We're done. All right. Thank you very much for checking out the Chris and Chris edition of Locked On Vegas Golden Knights. We'll do our best to get this to you every Saturday morning. When the season starts, Chris, I think it's going to be a little bit easier, right? I think it's a little easier to find stuff to talk about, a lot more content and stuff. So me and Chris will give an honest effort as long as, uh, as, long as his schedule allows. Chris is a busy man these days. All right. For myself, for little Chris, thank you very much for checking out the Chris and Chris edition of Locked on Vegas Golden Lights. Remember, this is a Saturday exclusive on YouTube. Myself and Tony Cordasco host Locked on VGK Monday through Friday on YouTube or anywhere you get your audio. Again, for myself and little Chris, thank you very much and take care.